The village of Giri in Ghana, Africa, has no running water or toilets and no electricity. During the rainy months, heavy flooding prevents the villagers from using the path to the train station. Farmers are unable to get their produce to market. Children are unable to get to school. And the sick are unable to get the health care they need. Civil, structural, environmental and mechanical engineering students with the University of wisconsin Platteville are designing a solution. With the help of project mentors, they've been considering everything from a floating bridge to a cable suspension structure. It's essential that the bridge be inexpensive, long-lasting, and easy for the village to maintain with locally available tools and materials. The team has decided on a reinforced concrete pedestrian bridge. But with Ghana's rainy season coming and commitments back home in the U.S., they have to build it in only two weeks. We, you will be part of the team that builds this bridge, this entire bridge that's in this plan. So, yeah. This reinforced concrete design is expected to last for decades. Uh, realistically, in 50 years, my children should be able to go back and visit the bridge that we helped construct. And it should be in the same condition that it is today. Okay, one thing that we got to keep in mind on this project is that we've got to complete it. If we got things that go wrong, we're going to have to uh, make sure that we make up that time because we can't leave this project without having it completed. You wouldn't normally see a bridge built in, you know, 12, 13 days, but we're going to get it done because of the energy that we have and the energy that the community has. Together, it's just really explosive and exciting to work with everyone. The country has two rainy seasons, and during them, uh, this little tiny stream becomes, it's not a raging river, but the water is far too high for the children to make it to school. Uh, the walk for anyone who has a job in the city to the train station goes from a couple hundred yards to five or six miles. This bridge means a better way of life for this community, absolutely. They can sell their goods, they can get to the city, they can get to the doctor better. Most importantly, they can get to school, so hopefully we'll be bringing up a new, more educated generation. They understand that there's a big world out there, and so the least we can do is build a bridge so they can get to school. It's very emotional from the time you pull in here with the van in the morning and see all the kids coming and waving. It's particularly emotional to me, and it will be for these students. You know, the first pour that we do in any community is complete pandemonium, and this probably looks a little bit crazy too, but it takes a while for everybody to figure out what their role is, and then after everybody figures it out, it almost is like a little ballet. Probably a third of our workforce is children, and probably uh, decades later, they'll be talking about how, yes, I helped build this bridge. Up to now, the weather has been cooperating. But after an unseasonable rain puts a halt to the bridge work, the engineering students and villagers must put in grueling 12-hour workdays. It's raining and it's wet, but it's good. It's crucial. Every concrete pour without a day of rain, if we can get in with the rain and successful and no failures in any equipment, it's a successful day. It's hard to stop once you start pouring the concrete. If you have to stop due to a failure, it's, it's kind of a disaster. One, two, three. To help make up time, the team divides into smaller groups, working on different parts of the bridge simultaneously. I think the whole idea of building this bridge was to enable kids to be able to go to school regularly. Families wanted to travel to uh, the nearby urban areas to uh, engage themselves in economic activity, and they couldn't do that. Some wanted to access you know, health facilities, and they couldn't do that. So this bridge, I think, is going to go a long way you know, to improve you know, the quality of life for uh, the community. Having kids tell me how they're going to be able to go to school. Everyone goes to school in America, basically. To have a place like this where it's a privilege for them to go to school, and for us to, to give them the opportunity to go to that school, it's, it's just amazing. 
With a reprieve from the rain, the team and the bridge are back on track. But storm clouds still loom on the horizon. One, two, three, we're gonna go down slowly. A little more. Things don't go exactly as planned. And in this particular case, we had one of the piers that had settled a little bit into kind of some softer material. So we had to make a little adjustment. We had to jack up the bridge, the entire bridge up three inches so that we could accommodate that, that little bit of settlement. So it's good to work through these kinds of things because they're part of engineering life. And it's a good life lesson as well as good lesson down here. Slide out, slide out. Slide out. Okay. Once the deck false work has been raised, the team must carry the steel rebar cages to the bridge site. They are so heavy, it takes more than a dozen people to set them in place. Ten inches this way. Good. Perfect. The rebar cages will be used to reinforce the concrete beams on both sides, strengthening the structural integrity of the bridge and making it safer. The team makes its final adjustments in preparation for a massive concrete pour. Together we build. Yeah, exactly, together. together. Yes. It is good that uh, uh, you brought your family to my village. I'm so happy. Yes, and Indeed. I'm so happy that your family wanted to work with us. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. It always makes me feel much better when the whole community Indeed. works like this. Yeah. yeah, it makes the project much better. Okay. Much better. Okay. Okay, you guys. This is our last concrete pour. Let's make sure that we're being safe. Have a good completion on the concrete. Okay, let's do it together. <laughs> when we get done with this, you know, the community is going to be, wow, we never thought we could build a bridge. But they did, right? They did it. They, they're, the, they're the people that did it, so now they're going to know that they can do a lot of other things, whatever else is important to the community, you know, whatever other project they've got. So that, uh, that is, a lot of times it's more than just the project. It's uh, empowerment of people working together. Despite the rain, the language barrier and adjustments in the field the villagers and engineering students have built the bridge in time for the approaching rainy season. Maybe in 10 years, that, that three-year-old girl that saw that women can do this, and, and we're all working together on a team, and they can help build their country up from the inside. Good work. Good work. <laughs> It, it is a huge sense of accomplishment to be able to come and build a bridge in 10 days. It, it just doesn't happen everywhere. Jeez. Well, it's really great to have the bridge done. I mean, already you can see people walking across with water on their heads. The bicycle man just went through. So it's just great to see them being able to use it and being happy about it. It's great to actually have a physical object in the bridge, something to look at to say we've accomplished, but I think the sense of accomplishment will come when we come back next year and all the kids can actually say they've completed a full year of school without missing a day. That's the true accomplishment in this project. The engineering students and villagers have bonded together and become friends. As the team says its goodbyes and prepares to return to the U.S., they're looking at new projects that will continue to build the local infrastructure. Whether it's drinking water, whether it's waste treatment, whether it's the building that you live in, whether it's the road that you travel along, it's all from engineering. 